uh, uh, here we go. So, um, methods. So a method is a block of code grouped together. I am. I set it up already. Thank you for checking. Uh, a method is a block of code that performs a particular operation and methods are inside of classes. Uh, so we've been using the main method, like all of our classes so far in REPL, they're called main with a capital M. That was just their protocol. Like instead of book or whatever, they just, they just, they're just using capital M main. And then inside of there is the method that Java looks for when it wants to run a program. It always looks for a method called main with a small M. Uh, and, uh, you won't have to memorize that public static void main string args line. It'll always be given to you or it won't be part of your assignments. Uh, 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 but uh, we can uh, use and call methods, even if you don't know how they work, as long as you know what they require, what their, what their parameter list needs to be and what they do. And this is important. When you call a method, uh, like remember programs go in order, you're going line by line. And when you get to a, a call that uses a method, Java goes and executes that method code, and then it comes back to where, to where it was. So if you had three calls in order, the middle one called the method, the middle one would go over there, do some stuff, and then it comes back, and then it completes the third call. They don't, they don't happen at the same time. It, it's all sequential. So, uh, so Java will go over, run the method, and then it comes back and keeps going. So it's like a little... Uh, it's like you're walking on the sidewalk and you just came to a cul-de-sac and instead of crossing the street, you, you turn right and you go around the cul-de-sac and you come back and then you keep walking on the street. Um, that's a new uh, uh, idea I had just now. I don't know if it's worth it. Um, here's a class, everybody. You're going to use this class today. It's the frog class. And uh, uh, it's my go-to uh, class for making you do things because uh, it accepts, uh, it has different methods uh, and makes you uh, practice all your, your Java skills. Um, that's the constructor. Take a look. When you create a new frog object, you don't send any information over. You just say uh, frog Frankie equals new frog. And then a frog has a one variable, it's called location. And that's how far it has hopped. Just to give you the, the it's like a number line, but it's all, in my mind, it's all positive, although there's nothing to prevent you from going negative on the frog. Um, but um, let's just be positive about our frogs. So um, then there's four methods in this class. So there's one method called hop right here that doesn't take any, uh, any information, and it adds one to the location variable. So if I created a frog and then I called the hop method, it would hop one thing forward. And then I have another method that... Uh, takes an integer and it hops that many spaces. So I could say hop 11 and the frog would go 11 spaces. Okay, and then I have a get location method, which has a new thing here, it's called return. This, this sends back the value of the variable. Remember, uh, we talked about this a little bit the other day. Location, it says private int location. Private means you can't, uh, if you're somewhere else trying to make frogs, you can't see that variable. You, you don't have access to that variable. So when I create a frog named Frankie uh, I, and then hop it and, and whatever, I don't know where it's at. If I want to know where it's at, I have to say Frankie.getLocation and it'll tell me. It sends back. This return is it, is it sends back a value. And, and I'll show you how that works in a second. And then the last thing is a two-string method, which, uh, which prints it. And don't worry about what's in there. You're going to learn it soon. And just trust me. It just prints dots, one dot for each spot, the hob, frog hob, the frog hopped. And then I, I do a little ampersand symbol for the frog. Okay, so here's some code that uh, I'm gonna try to. I'll move. Uh, how do I move this thing? Come on. Uh, uh, classic. So I create a frog name F. I print it. That's this line right here. There's the at symbol. I hop it twice. Nothing prints when you hop it. Then I print it again. Now it's got two dots. See? Uh, and then I hopped it ten more spaces. And now it's got 12 dots. That's how the frog works. That's all the frog does. You hop it and you print it. Um, and uh, I can put this back if I can figure out how to... Really intuitive. Um, 
So the frog class has two hop methods, one that takes an integer, one that doesn't. This is, now we talked about constructor overloading. It's the same with methods. Method overloading is when you have more than one method with the same name, but they have different signatures and uh, they take different parameters is another way to say it. Uh, here's the code for both of them. One just hops one and one hops n, whatever number you send over. And Java figures out which one to use when you run it. Um, questions? Um, good question. We're going to talk about that in a second. Every method either returns some data or it says it's void, which means it doesn't return any data. So these things, when you hop, it doesn't send anything back to whoever called it. See right here, I said F dot hop, find it hops. It doesn't give you any information. Whereas if I did F dot get location, the, um, the, uh, let's go back. Uh, the get location, see it says public int, and that tells you, hey, this is what I'm going to send back to you. I'm sending back an int, but I think I'm about to say that because I think I saw all these things highlighted. Here we go. Methods have a return type, an int, a double, a string. A method could even return a frog. Anyway, uh, uh, or they're declared void. So void isn't a bad thing. It just means there's nothing coming back. So public void hop just tells Java this method doesn't return any information. Uh, but public int get location tells Java, hey, this method is giving you, when you call it, you're going to get an integer back. Uh, so then I got the whole, uh, how, how uh, so yeah, when you use the hop method, there's nothing that gets sent back, no problem. But when you use get location, uh, here's two ways to use that. That method, look, I said int loc, LOC for location equals F dot get location. That's store that, that calls the method and stores the result in a variable. And then also you could just print it system dot out dot print F dot get location. Fine. Uh, you could technically on a line by itself, say F dot get location, and it's not going to cause any harm. Uh, it's going to just make the call. A number comes back and nothing is done with a number and the program moves on. So, uh, but you wouldn't, why would you do that? Anyway, uh, uh, but you can't say this. Look at this one. System dot 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 printlin f dot hop. Java wouldn't even compile. It would say uh, there's like a void method doesn't give you anything to print. So you can't print uh, the result of a vo void method. The, the result is the frog moved forward one space and there's nothing to print. Java won't. It won't just print a blank line. It says you can't do that. It, it's a it's a meaningless. Thing. So if you wanted to print something, you could print the get location. If you want to hop, you hop, but that you don't tie them together. So uh, so again, I just talked about the signatures and, and, and uh, part of a method signature is the return type, the void or the int or, or, or whatever that is. Remember, uh, and this is I'm pointing out for the first time, constructors are special. They don't have a return type. So you don't say public void book for a constructor. You just say public book. Uh, uh, a constructor always just is the word public and then the name of the class. And then you might have things in the parentheses or not. But um, the signature is the order and type of variables in the, in the method header. So void and then nothing. That's a signature. Uh, void and then int. And in that book class on our worksheet, the signature is, uh, the, the constructors are just a special type of method, but the, the signature for them isn't the return type because they, they don't have one, but it's just the variable, the parameter list, the order and type. Um, yes? Um, is the um, okay, is like um, the previous slide, um, there was a line that said like return, uh, return location, like maybe? Yeah. 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 It's a good, it's a good point. There's two things to note. One is, uh, when you have a method that's going to return something, you have to say what it's going to return in the header. So if I was going to return a piece of text, I would say public string, get location. A string is a variable type that we're going to learn about on Monday. Um, but you know, about ints public int. it's good. It's gotta, it has to have a call that says return and there has to be an integer there or Java won't even let you run the code. So, uh, and then furthermore, each, each 
when you call a return in a method, you're done with that method. Like there, if there was a line after this, it wouldn't run because it, when it gets to the return, it, it's done. It, it's not going to keep going. It, it, it left the method. So you might have an if statement. If such, if something's true, return this. Else, return this other thing. Um, another thing that's it's an interesting dynamic, but you could say if something is true, then return this, and then you don't need to say else. You don't. I, oh, I haven't taught you about ifs, but anyway, you don't have to. Um, uh, once you've said return, that nothing else is running. In fact, Java won't even let you put lines after that. It'll say it seems like you have code that can't be reached. Yeah. You have to have a return statement. Yeah, if you if you don't use the word void, then you must have a, a return somewhere in there. It has to be reachable code. Sometimes you put stuff in and it's inside of a conditional statement where it only runs if something's true. And then Java will say, seems like you haven't given me a way out of here. I'm not going to let you run this. Like there has to be a way that it knows it can get out of the method. Uh, yeah, okay. So now um, I'm giving you a day eight frog and... It's frog intro. You're going to make a frog or, or three and you're going to hop them and print them and use their methods. Okay. And then we do have another thing we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to learn how to ask the user for information. I've seen some of you do that already, but um, so I guess I'll pause the video. Uh, we're going to talk about something called the scanner class. So uh, we were just working with the frog class where you could see all the code. The scanner class is built into Java. So we're not going to see all of its code. Uh, I'm just teaching you how to use it. A scanner is an object that lets us get information from the user. So uh, if you want to use a scanner, you have to put uh, this note in at the top. And I just remembered uh, I have something I, somewhere I've got to put it. Um, uh, I'll usually put that in your program for you. I, you don't have to, you're not going to have to know that on the AP test, but um. And then when you want to use a scanner, you have to create the scanner object. So you have to have somewhere in your code before you try to access, before you try to get information from the user, you have to create a scanner. So this is just like the frog, frog f equals new frog, except you're making a scanner object and you don't have to call it scan. This name scan can be anything. Um, sometimes to make you laugh and I'm showing an example, I'll say scanner your mom equals new scanner, because it could be any legal variable name, okay? But often we use scan. Um, it's fine. I just didn't want you to think you had to use scan. You can't use scanner because that's the name of the class. But, uh, okay, so scanner scan equals new scanner, and then parentheses system dot in. You have to memorize that, and you'll practice until you get it. We're always using system dot in. That's the keyboard where you're going to type. There's another way to do a scanner that takes information from a file, but but um, you don't need to know that for the AP test. So uh, after you create a scanner, you use it like this. So check this out. I'm making an integer variable, and then I say scan.nextInt, and that, that gets an integer. It stops the program, waits for the user to type a number in, and then hit enter, and then it moves on. Uh, and uh, so next int or next double, notice the I and the int is capital here. That's the way they do it with jamming words together. They make the second and later words capitalized. Next double has a double. Next line, I wish it said next string, but it says next line. It's like a line of text. It'll be okay. Um, and so if I wrote this code, system.out.println, hop the frog, how many spaces? Um, Uh, then the next line of my code, int d equals scan dot next int. And then I could hop the frog that many spaces, f dot hop d. This is code that asks you how far do you want to hop the frog, and then it hops the frog that far. So this is an example of using a scanner. Uh, so to summarize, there has to be that line at the top where you're importing. That's because there's like a, there's millions of things in Java that are built in. And if you had to include all that stuff in your program, it would make your programs really big. And it would take a long time, way longer to run them. When you said run, it would have to be like looking at 100 million lines of code. Instead of all that, it doesn't, it doesn't even care about the scanner unless you're saying, hey, you know what? I need the scanner on this program. So then it'll get ready. And it's behind the scenes includes stuff that it needs for the scanner to work. And then you have to one time up near the top, create the scanner. 
you wouldn't, if you had a loop, someday we'll learn how to do loops. You wouldn't put that crate line inside the loop because there's already one, you know, it, 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 you don't want to create it over and over again. Uh, you don't have to call the scanner scan. And then finally to get a, a int from the user, you do next int. That's a method. Uh, to get a double, you do next double. And to get a string, a piece of text, you say next line. And uh, yeah, if you're asking a user for their name, you would do this code. And uh, if you want to ask the user for two integers, you can just put them in a row like this. You don't have to, you don't have to do it in two separate dialogues. All right, so that's it for our notes. I'll 